video. It's another day of Century Motors. I recently acquired this one horsepower power uh, 1750 RPM motor. This motor had a lot of problems with it. Um, I did not record the restoration on this one because I had already uploaded a video on my channel where I showed the restoration of a half horsepower Century and you can find that in my videos on, on the channel. Uh, in retrospect, that ended up being kind of a mistake because this motor had a lot of problems with it that the other one didn't have, and consequently I wanted to make a follow-up video with this one and talk about some of the issues that I ran into uh, on this motor. Um, at some point, this thing was dropped. Um, not by me, um, but it was dropped, and when that happened, a lot of damage occurred in the motor. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take you step by step through each one of these pieces and talk about some of the issues that I uh, ran into while I was restoring this thing. Uh, this motor weighs almost 150 pounds and uh, this restoration project took me about 80 hours to complete. Uh, there was really a lot of work involved here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk uh, about each piece and I'll explain uh, what I went through to uh, get this thing restored and then afterwards I'll show you I have a couple other Century motors that I haven't shown on video before so I'll kind of line up the motors here like a little uh, family portrait and uh, you can check out some of the other Century motors that I have okay okay we're gonna start off talking about the rotor the rotor had some damage to it that was not caused by the fall but was caused by excessive wear and tear. Uh, this whole this whole thing really had a lot of a lot of wear on it. Um, the centrifugal switch here, okay, this was so worn out that every time that it opened and closed, it was hitting these windings, and the tops of these windings were all worn out, and the wires were sticking out because there was so much slop in here. So I had to take this assembly apart. You could see I put that cotter pin in there. And I had to rebuild the linkages in there and put some new rods in there. I put some fatter uh, spacers in there. And I had to tighten up this mechanism because uh, it had way too much play in there. So once I got that resolved, I had to deal with these windings. All the wires were exposed in here and that was causing a problem with short circuits. So I used two-part epoxy and I went in between each one of these and I put insulation in between them and uh, got those all electronically sound so that I didn't have any short circuits in there and that, that took a while to do that. Now over here <clears throat> another problem that had occurred was that at some point the bearings on this motor became so worn that the rotor crashed into the stator while it was running and what that did was that moved all of these segments into each other these rows had looked like a bunch of crooked teeth. I had to take a pin punch and a hammer and I had to straighten out each one of these rows because underneath these insulating strips there's wires that run in here and if these segments are pushed into each other that can cause short circuits. So I took a couple hours with a pin punch and a hammer and straightened out each of these segments and got those all lined up again. So. Um, the issues with this rotor weren't really caused by the fall so much as they were caused by wear and tear. But okay, moving on to this end bell. When the motor had fallen, the rotor had collided with this end bell and it caused it to crack in three different places. The end bell was cracked underneath this brass fitting, it was cracked here, and it was cracked here. So in order to repair it, I had to drill some holes and I inserted some pins in there, kind of like if you had a broken leg and the doctor would go in and insert some pins in your leg. Um, it's difficult to see it because I tried to hide it cosmetically by using JB Weld after I was finished. But if you look over here, there's a brace that I, that I installed there. And uh, when I was finished, I just tried to uh, cover it up in such a way that you wouldn't really notice it unless I mentioned it to you. So that took some time. Uh, to get that repaired. Alright, so moving on to the housing, this is the area where the most damage had occurred. Um, the first thing was both of these front feet were completely snapped off. These feet are pretty substantial, so you can imagine the amount of force that it took to break both of those feet off. This foot over here was broken off 
but I had it. It was broken off about here. This foot was non-existent. I actually made that foot. I got a piece of cast iron and I used a hand file and I spent a number of hours shaping that to mimic the other one. Um, and then after I was finished shaping it, I drilled and tapped it and secured it to the housing. And then cosmetically, I used some JB Weld over here um, so that the, the curves matched this side. And similarly on this side, to reattach this, I had to come in through here, I had to re-secure it, and then cosmetically I, I put some JB Weld in there so that uh, it had a neater appearance when it was finished. Now, when I was discussing the rotor, I mentioned that the rotor at some point had crashed into the stator because the bearings had worn out. So inside of here, I had to go along and I had to straighten out these segments like I did on the rotor. There's a couple over here, you can see right in this area. I was not able to get those straightened out, so I just had to leave them be. But this is what I was talking about. When the rotor had made contact inside of here, it pushed a bunch of these segments out of whack, and uh, that was creating some problems. So these were in there so tightly, I just let them be. Now, another issue that I had was trying to remove the stator from this motor. During the impact, the stator actually became cockeyed, which is almost impossible for that to happen. I spent about a day and a half trying to get the stator out using traditional methods. Uh, normally, you could just heat the housing up with a torch, the housing expands, and the stator comes out real easily. That's the way it should go. Um, or you could press it out. But th that was not the case here. The stator had actually moved and became wedged in the housing from the impact and after a day and a half of trying to get it out using the uh, traditional methods, I finally uh, gave in and I cut the housing along here and I drove in some small wedges in here and I opened that up a little bit and that gave me the clearance uh, to pull that out. I really needed to remove the stator from the housing in, in this instance because it was very corroded inside there and I had to do all the work on those segments that were out of whack and I just I needed better access to it plus I wanted to uh, re-varnish the windings and uh, and do that kind of stuff so I really wanted that stator out of there to be able to uh, work on it um, normally cutting the housing on a motor should never happen that's like a one in a million thing um, but this was kind of an extreme case and uh, that's what I had to do and it worked like a charm another issue that occurred was when the thing fell uh, this bolt was broken off inside the housing here okay it snapped off inside there and because it was so corroded that was a challenge just to get that removed um, so that was another uh, time-consuming job that uh, that I had to deal with also the terminal block uh, was missing completely of course so I fabricated this terminal block out of a piece of micarta, which is the material that they use to make knife handles. So rather than having the four wires sticking out, I just made it so that just the cord is coming out, just gives it a little bit of a neater appearance. And lastly, <clears throat> after I had everything done, um, I reassembled the motor to test it. And so I put everything back together, I plugged the motor in, and the motor is just humming. And I'm like, what the hell is going on with this thing? So plug it in, the motor's just humming. Sometimes on these repulsion induction motors, the motor will just sit there and hum if this switch is not in the right position. For example, if this was just in between these two lines and you plug the motor in, the motor may hum. But that wasn't the problem that I ran into here but that could cause humming. What had happened here was, I plugged the motor in, the thing's humming, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, so I'm doing some research and going through a little bit of trial and error. <clears throat> and what I discovered was, the windings themselves have a kind of polarity. And at some point earlier, this motor had been rewound, and when they rewound it, they didn't have the wires sticking out like they would have been sticking out from the factory. They were sticking out in the wrong order. So when I, when I twisted the top two together and the bottom two together to put the windings parallel, which is what you would do to uh, run it on 110, 
you would put the windings in series to run it on 220. Um, the windings were out of polarity with each other, and that was causing the motor to just sit there and hum. So once I figured that out, I changed the polarity on the windings, and the motor took off and uh, was running real solidly. So now what I'm going to do is uh, off camera, I'll just go ahead and I'm going to put these pieces together and uh, bring out the other motors and you'll be able to see this one running as well as a few of the other ones. Well, this is the collection. Uh, up first, we're going to show you this motor right here. It's a 1.6 horsepower, 1750 RPM model. It has an M5 frame. Uh, this motor has a patent date of December 29, 1914, and October 19, 1915. So we'll plug it in and let you check it out. Right now. Gets up to speed in no time, and it runs beautifully, nice and smooth. It's a great little motor. On this motor, I took it apart, I restored it internally, I re-varnished the windings, I put new bushings in there, but I left the original paint and patina there. So it's a beautiful little motor. Next to it here, we have a quarter horsepower. This is also a 1750 RPM model. It has an M7 frame. This one also has the patent dates of 1914 and 1915 on it. Uh, like this one, I took this apart, I restored it internally, I re-varnished the windings, put new bushings, but I left the original paint and patina on there. It really runs nice, quiet, smooth. Over here on the end, we have a half horsepower. This one has the P1B frame. Uh, this one is a 3500 RPM model. It's a two pole. It's a little bit more rare than the uh, 1750 varieties. This one weighs about 75 pounds and it's the one that I restored in the video. If you search my channel, you'll see this one being torn down and, uh, and restored. Um, so this one got the full works rewinding or revarnishing the windings, putting the uh, new bushings, plus stripping down the paint, doing all the, uh, the cosmetic work to it as well. So we'll uh, plug it in, check it out. It really has a beautiful sound when it runs. While this one and this one are running, you could hear the ring oilers uh, rattling around in there. I don't have those uh, baths filled up with oil right now because I just got these here for demonstration purposes. So I just squirted a little bit uh, of oil inside each one of those. So if you hear any rattling, it's those rings rattling around inside there because these baths are not filled. And lastly, we have a one horsepower. Uh, this one is a 1750 RPM motor. These two motors have the patent dates of 1899 and 1903. So these two motors right here are older than the other two. Uh, this motor right here has a P4 frame. It weighs just under 150 pounds. And uh, after about 80 hours worth of work, I'm real happy to be able to uh, share it with you. So. Let's get it plugged in. Runs really nice and smooth. The action on the brushes when they snap back is a real positive action. Uh, you could hear the, uh, the rings rattling around in there. Like I said, I don't, I don't have the baths uh, filled up with oil. I just got these here for uh, demonstration purposes.
lastly, I thought I'd mention I picked up a new oil can. I had made a video about oil cans. Uh, you can find it on my channel. This was a gift from my mother, a birthday present. It's a beautiful can from uh, England. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It was certainly fun for me to make it. Uh, this project was really a challenge, um, but it was a great learning experience. And uh, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. So, hope you are too. Anyways, we'll see you the next time. Thank you for watching.